Heston Blumenthal is known for a number of dishes and I'm going to try and recreate one today and that is meat fruit. What? If you've not heard of it, meat fruit is uh, a trick. It's a, it looks like a mandarin, a mandarin orange, but it's got a chicken liver parfait inside. Um, this idea of putting meat inside a fruit casing is not new. Heston first read about it in a feast of Henry IV where pork mince was put inside an apple coating. I don't think it was a parfait, but um, it was there to surprise and delight and show off a little bit to the guests. I don't know what I'm eating. I don't know what it looks like and it's crazy. And Heston loves that sort of stuff. He loves to play with um, your expectations and your anticipations of what the food really is. And meat fruit is his most famous. When the restaurant Dinner by Heston was opening in 2011, it was one of the first dishes on the menu that really caught the public's attention. Uh, as it happens, Instagram was just taking off at the time and it was the perfect dish to have on Instagram because of course you've got a bright orange and then you cut it open to reveal the pate inside. I haven't eaten myself, so I'm going in not so much blind, but I've certainly read a lot about it. I'm gonna be working from Historic Heston um, which lists the whole process, procedure and history behind the dish. Um, I know Heston is particularly proud of it, so I'm going to give it a go now. So here's a quick run through of the recipe itself. I'm not going to do it blow by blow. Um, I've got the full link on my blog below. But in short, onions, garlic and herbs get marinated in port and marsala wine overnight and then the next day simmered until they become sticky. Then I'm going to take my pork livers, add some salt, and then I'm going to blend them up with my sticky, boozy onions. Then I'm going to whiz through melted butter and blend that too, so it's all nice and smooth. Just to get rid of any bits, I pass it through a fine sieve, and that gives me my parfait mixture. I'm going to pour that into a bain marie, pop that in the oven to cook. I'm going to cook that until it hits the right temperature. So my meat fruit pate has been in the fridge overnight. I'm interested now to know what it's like. Let's take a look. Well, it's certainly gray. I'll be honest, it smells a bit funky. And it says to expect discoloration, but actually it's the same all the way through. I thought we'd have a, a, a brownish layer and then a pinkish layer. Um, I'm going to try some. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty strong. It's got a. It's got a funky blue cheese type of flavour. It's not my favourite. I'm going to be honest with you. But we have a whole recipe to do. And so I'm going to take my parfait mixture and put it into spherical moulds. I'm going to channel my inner plaster out and use a very tiny offset palette knife, which gives me great satisfaction to use. Smooth it all over and leave a lovely finish. Pop that in the freezer to set. The next day I can unmould it. You can see it's now frozen completely solid. I'm going to pop it onto the plate. Using my blowtorch just to melt the surface, I can then lightly meld them together. I'm also going to pop a cocktail stick in there to make handling it a little bit easier later on. Pop them back in the freezer to completely seal up. I'm going to make a, a mandarin jelly now with mandarin pieces, glucose and colouring and blitz that all together. The reserved mandarin syrup, I'm going to bloom the gelatin in and then bring it all together over the heat. Strain it, let it set, and a couple of hours later, we've got ourselves mandarin jelly. I'll then bring it back up to temperature and pop it in a cup. Now my frozen spheres can get rounded into the jelly. Isn't that lovely? Pop those into some polystyrene so that they can drain off in the fridge a little bit easier. However, it's the wrong temperature. I should be letting this cool to about 27 where the gelatin's very happy. And now I'm going to put this back in the correct temperature mixture. 
I think this might cause me an issue later on. Let's find out if it does. So we've had a period of resting, of stewing down the onions, of marinating the onions. We've made a meat pate with chicken livers. We've made a mandarin puree into a mandarin jelly. And we've dipped those frozen spheres into the jelly. And let's see what's happened. It is not a resounding success. The weight of the toothpicks was not enough to hold the meat fruit up and they have collapsed. Um, with the various dippings I've done, it's so bumpy. So it doesn't look much like right now. Let's try plating up and see what we can salvage. Okay, let's get some on there, get some jelly, get some pate. The pate, the parfait, I should say, is absolutely smooth. It's like a mousse. It's not bitty at all. It's been sieved several times, so it should be. Um, the jelly is very pleasing. It's a bit more subtle than I would like, but I guess that's what comes from using tin mandarins and not true mandarin puree. So I like the pate, I don't love it. Um, I deliberately chose pork liver pate rather than chicken as the recipe recommends. But to be honest, it's come out quite gamey. Um, there's a thing about soaking livers in milk before you used it, and maybe I should have done that just to sweeten it, just to tame down the flavor slightly. So let's look at what went wrong there. And everything. Um, I should have piped the mousse, the parfait, into the moulds and then I wouldn't have had air pockets and given it a little tap just to get the air out of it. That would have helped enormously and then given a smoother finish. Need to revisit the mandarin jelly formula. I think it's okay, I think I rescued it, but I should have let it cool to 27 degrees. I just glossed over that part of the recipe. Um, it's a big recipe, so I'm not surprised I, mixed, I messed something up. Uh, that would have given the jelly it would have been ready to set rather than be all runny. Don't use a cocktail stick, use a bamboo skewer instead. That would hold it in place better. Try and get hold of proper mandarin puree rather than make up the recipe yourself like I did. Um, and that would get the right effect. It also hasn't dimpled, I think, because the ratios were off. It took me best part of four days, and that obviously not, there's a lot of just leaving it in the fridge and leaving it in the freezer. But it's not really that intense. It's not that difficult to do. In fact, none of the stages are difficult. There's a lot of them, but none of them require a special technique or a special skill you might not have. What have I learned? I've gone through all those parfait stages. That's interesting by itself, how to make it. And I must admit, it does look fun. I've butchered it now, so it doesn't look that way. I've never actually eaten meat fruit at dinner by Heston before. If you have, let me know how was it, because the reviews rave about it. It'd be interesting to know your thoughts on it. Anyway, yet another interesting look into how Heston's recipes work. I hope you enjoyed that. If you know someone you think would like it, um, please share it with them. Copy the link, send it in a WhatsApp, pop it in a text, and uh, see what they think of it. Uh, I'd love it if you could hit like, uh, and if you've got time to subscribe so you get the latest video that's coming up, even ringing that little bell notification that you get alongside the subscribe button, again, helps me out tremendously and helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.